Welcome to the 48th Annual Conference on National Affairs. We are so excited to be back on the mountain again. I'm Benjamin Hearn. And I'm Cassidy Stefano. Welcome to the Ridge Report. Here's what's going on. Now that we are all up here on the mountain, let's see how the different states arrived. We flew from SeaTac Airport down to Atlanta. Uh, we used a bus. Um, and then we stayed there for about two days and then drove up with the Alabama Dela delegation. It took us about two hours to get here, so not a long ride. Uh, it was about a four hour drive since we stopped for lunch along the way. Um, when we were in Atlanta, we went to this one uh, restaurant and we had a driver from the uh, hotel who didn't really know how to drive that well. I heard another delegation broke down and some people had to drive like 23 hours, but we only had two hours. So. <laughs> like he would run red lights a lot and would cross over all three lanes to move over. He was a little bit scary at times. We took three plane rides here, which took a total of 15 hours each. Okay, we started from Honolulu, Hawaii to San Francisco, California. That was five hours. Uh, first we flew to Jacksonville, Florida, and then we took a bus to Savannah, Georgia, and then to the mountains. And then from there, it was, we flew to Jersey. That was another five hours. Um, we flew from LAX, uh, or some from Northern California. We flew to a layover in, uh, half of us had a layover in Vegas, half of us had a layover in uh, South Carolina, I believe. And then from there, we flew to Charlotte which was, I think, about two, three hours. And then we drove here, which took like two hours. Okay, so like our process in getting to Kona, uh, we go, we meet up at the, we call it the Causeway Bed. It's this hotel in Lansing that we stay at. And then we flew the rest of the way yeah. to Jacksonville. Uh, about an hour and a half bus ride to Savannah, and it took us uh, pretty much the whole day to get here. Uh, we load up our tour bus and we head to like a pre-trip in DC, which was just absolutely spectacular. And then from DC, we make our way slowly down here. In DC, I guess I could just list off some like major events, so, like the Supreme Court ruling on ACA. We were there. Uh, the Supreme Court ruling on gay marriage. We were there. Uh, we met Bernie Sanders, which was like, ah, yeah, our delegation like collectively swooned. It was beautiful. Um, and then just a lot of bonding, just getting to know everybody in our delegation and making sure we're really close before we get up here. Just finding where to go because everything was so new and no one knew, like, we're, it was the first time for everybody here. So we were all unfamiliar with the place and yeah, it was hard to find this cab. Okay, so from Michigan to DC, like factoring in from stops, the trip's about like 14 hours long. And then we go from DC, to a stop in, I believe, Winston-Salem, and then that alone is like six hours, and then it takes us another like four to actually get here, so there's like, yeah. Well, everyone got here in different ways, and everyone brought different things to the mountain. Let's take a look at the significance of some of the pins and t-shirts that the states brought. Hi, my name is Nick Felita from the New Jersey delegation, and I'm here to talk a little bit about pins and their importance to conference. So, the New Jersey pin this year is, uh, a seal playing with a little rubber ball and across the top it says the great seal of the state of New Jersey. So that's just a little pun on the actual state seal, replacing it with the animal. Uh, and I guess the importance of pins and what they actually mean besides just being a cool piece to put on your lanyard is, you know, prompting interaction between all the different delegates and making sure that the entire conference kind of co coalesces with one another and can bond over something as simple as a pin on a lanyard. Thanks. I'm Robin. I'm Elizabeth. And this is Megan. I'm Megan. Robin. And it all started a few a few years ago when one, one of our certain delegates, blonde hair and a blonde mustache, came up on an alligator which was perceived to have eaten his dog. And so in that instance, he got a knife, he went out, he stabbed the alligator, then brought, brought it to his taxidermist, who then later turned the alligator into a head, and then we might see that head lingering around the conference is up to the moon. Well, the alligator already had a head, but now we can carry around the head because it's been stopped. Then we bought um, a baby head to match the baby head. So, um, how that leads to our pins is that we really feel like the story about the alligator represents um, the sort of how Louisiana is able to persevere through everything that we've been through. And to me, this pin is incredibly important because unlike a lot of the other pins, which are shaped like the state, this is very symbolic. And to us, it represents not only the strength of one of our fellow delegates, but how we can also feed off of that strength. 
I'm Elizabeth Harrington and I'm from Model United Nations Delegation. Our pins this year are uh, globes that are shaped like hearts and uh, basically our pins are all about mun love. So uh, every year we have a theme mun love, mun heart, so we try to share the love at Kona um, through the whole world, not just with our nation but with the, um, the entire globe. Hi, I'm Jordan Madden from the Wisconsin Delegation. Uh, this is my third year at Kona. Um, our shirt right now is this one, and on the back of it, it's got a badger and says, sorry for McCarthy. If you don't know, Joseph McCarthy was a senator from Wisconsin who pioneered a big communist witch hunt during the 1950s and ruined a lot of people's lives. So, yeah, we made a shirt about it. Good afternoon, Kona. My name is James Farnsworth. I'm from Minnesota, and I'm the social media editor, and I'm also the conference weatherman. Now, you've probably already looked at the weather on your Weather Channel app and your iPhone or whatever, but what's a broadcast without a weatherman? So, tomorrow, Monday, June 29th, it's going to be 83 and sunny. It's going to be a perfect day on the mountain. Um, it's going to be generally sunny, despite maybe a stray shower in the afternoon or a thunderstorm, uh, but tomorrow is your ideal day on the mountain, and it's going to be beautiful. That's all we have for you today. I'm Benjamin Hearn. And I'm Cassidy DiStefano. Tune in tomorrow for more Kona coverage. Hashtag blessed.